auditioning can be so painfully humiliating uh, to the point where there was times when I just I wouldn't even there was things that I really liked and I just thought I would be reading and I was like I can't I can't I can't put myself through it today I just can't do it when you come in hang them outside uh, on the hook with your coat and come in that door and try and lose them for the one time that you're in the room because that's your time. And what happens in a lot of cases is they let the nerves run the audition. So I suggest you come in, throw the nerves to one side, do the read, it's your read, it's your moment, and for all you know, it's your job. I've been told, because I'm married to a voice teacher and dialect coach, is to deep breathe as much as possible. And even if you have to take three breaths, which may, may seem a long time, before you start, because your nerves, in my experience, make you stutter and rush. And so you, you get ahead of yourself and they can pick up that panic. And the camera especially picks it up. So I think that that's essential. And the other practical tip is that if you bite gently down on the back of your tongue, you release saliva into your mouth because in my nerves, everything dries up instantly. So if you're taking a deep breath, biting down on the back of your tongue, it gives you just a moment of preparation. As I started working on casting other people and watching them audition, I would notice that they would hold back or they would have this fear, but what I wanted to see was the, my lines pop off the page, which is, you know, which is what I wrote them for. So. I've learned to really to do to do the homework about the character and understand the character and just go in there and enjoy the process and connect with the people that I'm auditioning with. A lot of times people don't, you know, get nervous in auditions. And then you start to analyze what what makes you nervous about it. Say for instance, you you may want the job because you need the money or you want the job because you want the next notch on your resume belt. So, I think you have to put all that aside and make the audition about one thing, and that's how did you do for the day with your acting? How, how, when you do the audition, were you relaxed? In other words, what can you personally get out of that process at the time you go in? Instead of making your objective that, uh, your objective is to book the role, think about what is the objective of the character. Put, throw, throw your energy into that. The best piece of advice I ever heard was actually a 30 second little clip of Brian Cranston saying that um, he spent however many years going for auditions wanting to get the job. And I don't know how he tricked his head or meditated for long enough to say to himself, just do this five minutes and really give the character and the dialogue the respect it deserves and leave the audition going, I fucking did great in the audition and forget about the job. Really take each each moment uh, as auditioning as a as a chance to actually do it you know as a as an actual chance to perform to investigate a character to work on a script regardless of the outcome if there's like a way to really commit to the fun of that and the curiosity of that like i said and being able to somehow make the st your stakes your personal stakes in getting the part way lower than the stakes of the character in that situation then, you know, then I think it can be a much more uh, interesting process that can teach you something uh, as opposed to one that's just uh, utter humiliation. <laughs> the audition process is quite often starts with, are you confident when you walk through the door? And if you're not confident and you don't have confidence, they smell it. That's number one. The second thing that's important to them is your look. Are you the look they're looking for? If you have confidence and you have the look they're looking for, you've almost accomplished the whole mission. If you can just talk, if you can just have a conversation with their words, that's, it's that simple. Sometimes you walk in the room and you're the wrong person for it, and they kind of, it just is, because they've cast somebody else five minutes ago, or it's a different look that they're looking for totally because of various other reasons, or, you know, it just isn't going to work. And then sometimes you have to say, well, actually, if I'm good enough, I can make, I can change their minds. And that can happen. So I would never despair. I'd never say, oh, well, it says in the stage directions that I'm supposed to be a 16-year-old 
<laughs> you can always say, well, maybe if you tweak that a little bit, I could uh, get away with it. So never be afraid to have a shot at something. There might be something about your face that reminds the director of someone he doesn't like, and for that very reason, it's that fickle, and you won't get the job. Whether or not you're right or wrong for a role, that's just luck. Who knows if your nose is off by one millimetre and you're wrong for a role or you know, you've got the wrong, whatever it is, that's not your fault. Don't give yourself a hard time at all about stuff you can't help. Don't always insist that it was your fault or that you weren't up, up to the, the business of it. Learn your lines going in. If you are going to undermine yourself by not knowing the lines, learn the lines. Um, if they, sometimes as they do, don't give you the lines to learn, don't kill yourself for looking at the sheet. No matter how many scenes they ask for, and at whatever short notice, uh, learn the dialogue so that you know it back to front. Um, because going in semi-prepared leaves you very vulnerable. And if they ask for it at double the speed or to try and do something different and you're struggling to remember the lines, you will fall apart, in my experience. I don't particularly like if actors, for no reason, decide to change the line because they haven't bothered learning it. So I think some of those people improvise because they think it's better. It rarely is. A writer has taken a long time to polish those lines. So I'm very keen on respecting the lines. I think it can be risky because it completely depends on the style of director. And if you don't know who you're who you're facing, you know, I like it to some degree. I don't, I don't like it when they bring in props and stuff because that shit just gets in the way. But, um, but if they come in with an attitude, you know, you go, okay, you're the kind of actor who maybe is a little bit method, maybe has to embody the part, can't just turn on and off. And I would respect that about an actor. But a lot of people, especially if you're a day player or something very easy, quick, you just need to come in and show that you can turn on. I mean, I have actors that come in that have really been working so much with the character. So they have, they bring clothes with them and they ask, if, is it okay if I change into, because I really feel better. And then say, feel free, do that, if that feels better for you. But it's not necessary for us. But if, it, if, they, if that makes, makes them comfortable, go ahead. A little goes a long way in interpreting the look of a character. Come in with as little props as possible. This morning I saw a girl in here in Bow Street and she was doing a slightly, no, she was doing a very working class New York piece, married to a boxer. And she just had a pair of big earrings and her hair up. She didn't come in in a fur wrap and a cocktail dress. She came in with just a suggestion of um, down market, but kind of great. And uh, I liked it. It's just enough. Yeah. Well, I think if someone's desperate, it makes them uncomfortable and makes everybody else in the room uncomfortable. Um, if you come in and you just do your work like a professional and the auditioning is part of the work, it's part of the job. Yeah, it's hard on all of us. It's hard on both sides. That's the other thing is understand that, you know, I'm sitting there watching 35 people that day walk in and out and you just want to make it as pleasant for all of us as possible. The worst thing that you can do is walk into a casting director's office giving them the impression that you need the job and that you do anything for it. Which is funny because that's a complete paradox in a lot of ways because everybody's going to tell you, oh, you got to make it like everyone is the last one, you know what I mean? And that's not the case. In fact, the opposite is true. And you have to be confident that your talent and your ability and your skill will naturally carry you through the process. And the most important thing about walking into a casting director's office is to leave an air of mystery about you. So knowing when to get out of the room is just as, as important as knowing your performance and you know what you want to do with the character. I don't like people who are you know too sycophantic and beggy and sort of like I've got to get this this is you know when will I hear it's it's like you need to leave the room with your dignity. In my experience, where I respond best to people who, um, who don't come in with sort of super high energy, 
um, desperate to make an impression because I've, you know, it's, it's an exhausting process for any director to audition. And there's something really uh, refreshing when a person just walks in, says hello, talks as themselves, if that's the sort of audition that it is, or if not, just presents the work and is listening to you. You know, what, what do you like as a human being yourself if you meet another person? You like them to be open to you, you like them to listen to you, you like to feel that they're not sort of attempting to sell you something. And it's the same as a director meeting an actor. And sometimes you hear stories about people's flippant attitude towards something and then that's the thing that people are drawn to. A lot of the people I speak to, my clients, uh, about auditions or meetings or whatever, is that they've always noticed, uh, pretty much everybody has noticed, that when they don't really care about the meeting, it's the one that they're successful in. When you don't care, or you're too tired or whatever, you don't have the energy to even care, whatever the case might be, uh, when, when that's the situation, there's more of you uh, visible because you're not trying to hide it. Because you don't care. And then, hey presto, we see more of who you really are. And that's interesting. That idea of like what, what is inside of you already, the way that you view the world is already so unique and original that if you're able to connect honestly to how you, how you really feel about something and how what you're, what you're reading or what you're saying or what you're imagining really does affect you and you're just able to, to allow that to come out, that's already uh, so special to be able to do that. And then bit by bit those other things can come and you'll have time to uh, you know, add characterization and all those really fun things that you want to do to, to, to be special and to, you know, and to really just to have fun because it's so fun to be someone completely different. But that first step of just, of just uh, connecting authentically to a, a moment in a situation with yourself with as much of yourself as you can bring, uh, I think that that's, that's key. If we could find a way of exposing the individual in an audition, 10 chances to one, that's going to cause their eyebrows to raise because it's not something they would have expected. The majority who are going for the audition will be going in trying to replicate something they've assessed or they've assumed is being uh, desired or looked for. And the other side of that is, is that you can walk away from an audition not really, I mean, yes, obviously investing in the hope that it, that it goes well, but not investing such that you're crestfallen if you don't get it, because it just so happened that what you brought wasn't what they were looking for or what fit their requirements. It's nothing to do with a negative reflection on your performance. But it easily can become that if you go in trying to replicate what you think they're looking for. Just connect on a personal level to what you're saying and what you're doing and what you're seeing. Just that is enough. That, just that alone, if you're able to honestly uh, let whatever you're saying affect you and change the way that you see, that you see out of your eyes and to the person that's across from you. If you're able to do that, that already is a huge step past what so many others are going to be doing, right? Which is, which is desperately just trying to get the part. <laughs> and actually, the more patient you are and the more understanding you are and the less pushy you are and the less egocentric you are, then the more you're gonna um, give yourself a better life, I think. <laughs> I mean, acting's hard anyway, Where, whatever you, wherever you go and whatever you do, it's always, there's always a lot of no working, there's always a lot of things that don't happen for you, but you're better off in the long run too. I think to be, um, to be who you are. That doesn't take into account the fact that you may end up auditioning in front of people who aren't very nice or who are, you know, uh, 
doing, you know, involving, involved in their own trip, whatever that happens to be, and not projecting themselves, honestly. I think the best defense against that is still just to be yourself, react as normally as you can, um, and just do your work as, as, as you feel it. It's a balance between being relaxed and believing in yourself, but also being friendly and open and, and, um, and warm with the people that you're meeting. If they see someone that is so close to who they are, so that the audience believes they're voyeuristically uh, watching the performance, it allows them invent their own story because you're not telling them what to think. In fact, you don't care what they think. They want to disappear into someone that doesn't even know they're there. Uh, learn what you can from the scene out of it, you know, kind of plug, plug away at the scene and see what the implications are. Read the whole scene out loud to, you know, on the, onto a, a recorder or something, play it back and see if stuff comes to mind. So I would always have a plan about how I see it from what the evidence I've been given. Read the text and interpret it as best as possible, understand it, and then be magnetic in that room so that the people behind the desk can go, I like this, this person hasn't got it 100% right, but they're super interested, they really read, they've really done their homework, and I, you know, I, I'm not, I wouldn't kill them without hanging out with them for eight weeks. If you didn't prepare enough, you're right to give yourself a bit of a hiding on the way home. If you go in not knowing exactly what it is that you're doing, you, you sort of run into hurdles a bit and... Most of the time, if you are prepared, uh, you can give a good reading and then you can give a less good reading. That really won't be the critical issue. You know, it's always very frustrating when you walked out and you haven't given your best reading of it. But if you're prepared, you're in the zone and you have a chance, they will tease you out a little bit more. Um, they'll be interested in you. But be prepared that if the guy says, we're thinking more that he's just, you know, much quieter than that. Or we're thinking more that actually it doesn't mean that much to him. And be prepared to jettison your preconditions or your preconceptions, I should say, you know. So be, be prepared and then be prepared to, to ignore all that. I should not be in a place where I'm thinking about now I'm doing this, now I'm doing that. It should be, I, I should be free within the scene to, to just be open. So any thought processes that are going on in preparation, uh, whether they're conscious or whether things are happening to your body, anything like that that you're conscious of doesn't, doesn't need to be there anymore. It's got no place in that scene because that's the actor thinking about the character in front of the camera. You don't need that. It's just getting in the way and it will become apparent to the camera that that's what's going on. So the biggest problem with auditions is one note and the scene might require just one note and that's fine. But if you get two takes, Try and nail the scene in one of the takes, but in the other take, try and show some versatility. Try and go from A to B to C. Um, you know, from masking emotion to, you know, or from sad to happy to something else, because, you know, the scene just could be completely flat and monotone, but you probably won't get the job if you just do it like that. So I would say change, you know, and, and by changing, by forcing yourself into three or four beats of change in the scene, you kind of, trick yourself into being in the, in the present, in the here and now, as opposed to, you know, you have this idea and this plan and you're executing the plan, which is the opposite of how life works. People make the mistake of, of, uh, of trying to supply what they think a director or a casting agent is looking for. Uh, but there is no, there, there's no, there's nothing wrong with, with, doing your research, finding out what a director uh, does, if there's a style or if there's a way they shoot or is a particular process that they like or a look that they like. There's no harm in knowing that. But it seems to me that, that uh, when you get too deeply involved in that or when you, when you marry too closely to that, that the danger becomes uh, real, that you end up trying to chase that or present that. If you're too prepared, you're too fixed in a process and there's no room for collaboration. And there is a certain amount of play that's going on in an, in an audition 
because you're really, I think for me, what you're seeing is, um, can I get along with this person and are they going to challenge me in a good way and create a, an interesting character together? Because you are doing it together. The one thing that was great about Brie was that she, as soon as she started working and I started suggesting and she started responding, it felt like two human beings in the process of trying to get to what it was that was most interesting about this stuff. And she was confident enough to commit to something, but then say, okay, now what do we think about that? Was, you know, and I mean, that was a very luxurious kind of context in which I had several hours with one really fine actress in an environment that was really nice. It wasn't the same pressurized, you know, 10 minutes each situation that would, people would probably experience more at the beginning of their career, but the principle is still there. If the director offers you that conversation, then you should take it. And one of the things that they will be most impressed by, I think, is the capacity to hear and respond uh, and contribute in that, in that back and forth. Um, auditions for me, I've never been somebody who loves auditions. I've just always gone in there trying to impress. Uh, I, I, there's always actors who say, you know, when they audition, they love the process and they just have fun. And I wish um, that's how I appro approached more of my early auditions, is just going in there for the enjoyment of, of just performing. Um, I think it's a, it's a particular talent that some actors have and some actors don't. And I think a lot of good actors are quite shy people and, um, you know, it can take, you know, a, a couple of hours or even a couple of days to uh, establish trust with somebody and, you know, if you, for you to feel, you know, comfortable enough to expose yourself in front of people. If you stay at it long enough in L.A., and I really believe this, you will always get your chance. You'll get a shot. But you got to be ready. So are you doing the work when your time comes? Because what LA's not great at is giving you a second chance. So be ready.